What I want to talk about now is the way that health is affected by the weather in general. Now this of course will depend on where you live. In cold areas the risk is cold. In warmer areas the risk is, is hyperthermia, which is, is, is a separate of a, a subject of a separate uh, talk. Body temperature can of course rise, particularly if people are dehydrated and uh, if you live in somewhere like northern India, around about New Delhi, the temperature can go 45, 46 degrees centigrade. Very, very hot. And, and hyperthermia and sunstroke are possibilities. But I'm going to talk about those separately. But one obvious thing that changes with the weather is, is hay fever sufferers, pollen and fungal spores. Um, when there's more pollen and fungal spores around, people are going to get more of the rhinitis type symptoms associated with uh, hay fever. And in hot weather, there's more thromboembolic disease. Presumably, or, or at least partly, this is because of the dehydration that's caused. When people sweat, the blood becomes thicker, more concentrated, uh, and thromboembolic disease is more likely to occur. So presumably, this could be offset by drinking large volumes of water whenever the weather is warm. In fact, for most people, it's a good principle to drink more water than we actually do. But here in the UK, the main increase in morbidity and mortality occurs during winter. 20 to 30 percent more people die. UK increase in more mortality and morbidity every winter. So 20 or 30 percent of people, more people die and get sick in winter as opposed to summertime. And certainly hospital wards can, can fill up with patients in wintertime suffering from, normally suffering from various respiratory diseases. And this is actually something the epidemiologists have done work on. So here, here's some fairly definite figures. After a cold period of time, heart attack will increase incidence after three days. So this is after it's been cold. So after cold, there'll be more heart attacks after three days and more strokes with a time delay of five days. Now, can you think why this might be? Well, we're not really sure, but it may be to do with the fluid shifts that we talked about during the talk on hypothermia, that when someone's cold, there's a peripheral vasoconstriction, more blood goes to the centre of the body, and there's a cold-induced diuresis making the blood become thicker. Maybe this is the rationale for why you get more heart attacks and, and more strokes after a period of cold weather. And what we also talked about was there might be a change in clotting factors uh, as a result of cold weather. But we do know that there's more heart attacks three days after a cold snap and more strokes five days after a cold snap. Now I'm sure your mother told you not to get wet and cold because you would get a cold. You would get a cold caused by a rhinovirus or you would get a respiratory infection. Well, is this actually true? Does getting cold give you a cold? Does getting cold predispose you to respiratory tract infections? Well, actually it is true. Epidemiology again has demonstrated this. So when someone has been cold and shivery, they are more prone to colds and respiratory infections. Now, I don't know whether getting wet is a factor here, whether wetness predisposes to infections, or it's just that the wetness makes you become cold, because when you're wet, you, you do feel very cold. But it is true that respiratory infections are more common 12 days after a, a period of cold weather. So quite a long delay there. But not really that surprising when you think about the incubation period for various diseases. So getting cold, getting wet does predispose us to respiratory infections. Maybe it's the effect on the cilia that we talked about before. If the cilia aren't working as effectively, you're not going to clear the secretions. As far as we know, hypothermia doesn't directly uh, cause an immunocompromised uh, situation. So I'm not actually too sure why this is the case, but the epidemiological results do show that it is the case. So health can certainly be affected by the weather.